Hi again folks, how's all doing? So I thought it was about time I brought you up to date with uh, what I've been doing to the layout. Um, the section on, in front of the window here is now te technically removable. Um, if I unplug all the wires underneath, this will lift out. Should I ever need to do so? Hopefully, I never do. But at least uh, I can pull that out if need be for access to the window for whatever reason. As you can see, I've built two new platforms using a Metcalf kit. Uh, the surface on this one is uh, from Scale Scenes. Um, this one will be done the same, but uh, I really shouldn't have added the surface yet. Um, not till I've got the ballast down because I'll need to spray water and uh, water on that uh, printed out surface texture will uh, just ruin it. So I'll, I'll cover it with cling film or something, but uh, I'll wait till I've got the ballast down before I uh, surface this other platform. I decided to have a much smaller station building this time and uh, initially I went for this, the Pico Country Station, um, which seemed yeah, about the right size and kind of what I was after. Um, I started building it and decided I didn't like it. So uh, I've got something else on order. Um, we'll see how that works out. But, you know, some country stations were big grand affairs um, and others weren't. But I've decided to this time to, to keep it simple. Um, the station will be a bit unusual because it's uh, facing this way. You know, normally in a layout, you're, you're looking at the, the, the track side of the station. But with this one, we're going to be looking at the, the main station building from behind. But it's good to be different. I've been building this retaining wall along here, just using Metcalf card. Um, I plan to have some polystyrene behind it, just as a kind of bank. Lots of bushes and stuff, possibly a fence. And then we'll have the, the backdrop going along. I fitted a couple of amateurs. I uh, originally just planned to have one for the inner track just for testing locomotives, which is really what they're for, but uh, I decided to fit one to the other track as well just for the hell of it because it's uh, you know it's quite interesting seeing what sort of uh, current locomotives are pulling. Um, uh, but you know it's, it's particularly helpful with older locomotives to see uh, how efficiently the, the, the motor is working and it'll be interesting, interesting to see after doing repairs if the, uh, the current draw drops a little bit. Uh, the more efficient the, the motor, the fewer amps it should pull. So I've got two locomotives running at the moment. I've got my Bachmann Class 66, which is pulling 100 milliamps. And I've got my Bachmann Caledonian 812, which is barely registering. And that's obviously a very efficient motor. I think it's pulling about 50 milliamps. Running my Hornby double card of Castle, it's going 250 milliamps. These are plus or minus one amp meters, so they'll uh, read uh, when the train is going backwards as well as forwards. So that's going forwards and then backwards. The one on the left is broken down into 100 milliamp units, and the one on the right is broken into 50 milliamp units. That's because I got the meters from two different sources at different times. Uh, I prefer the one on the left that's broken down into 100 milliamps. So I may actually replace the one on the right at some point. Uh, they're simple enough to wire in. Basically, you just take the, the positive feed from your controller into one terminal on the meter and then connect the other terminal on the meter to your track. So they're, they're just directly wired into the live feed. Now, I had my point motors connected to my Hornby HM2000. Um, that's the way it was on my old layout, and they worked okay, um, but they did make a fairly loud buzz. Uh, so I tried connecting them up to the Morley controller here, which has a built-in CDU. It is a capacitor discharge unit, and they worked okay, even using these old Hornby switches, which you know are known to have a bit of an issue with CDUs. But what I found using the CDU in the Morley unit was that uh, if a locomotive was running and I changed a point, uh, the locomotive would uh, momentarily just slow down. So clearly, the uh, you know the power was being drained from the, from the supply to the track when the uh, CDU was in operation. So I didn't like that. So I decided to get a separate CDU. So initially, I got this one. This is a RK CDU two from RK Education. I got this on Amazon, and uh, you know at first I thought it was okay, but I noticed that when I pulled the the, the lever. Sometimes the, the points just wouldn't change, um, no matter how slowly I moved the lever, because with these old Hornby levers, you do have to move it slowly. Um, you know, the, the CDU kicks in once, 
let it recharge, and then it kicks in again. Um, but with this, no, sometimes it just wasn't doing it, which I thought was rather strange because the CDU on the Motley controller seemed to work fine. Um, you know, with barely a pause to the lever, it, it worked absolutely fine. So I decided, yeah, maybe that's not so good. So I got this one from Gauge Master and it seems to work fine. Um, you do have to move the lever slowly, but it does change the points and they don't make a loud buzz and they don't cause the locomotive to pause. The Archie Education one uh, is a 12 volt CDU, um, whereas the Gauge Master one can take 24 volts. So I've connected it up to a 21 volt power supply at the moment. Um, I'll get hold of a 24 volt one at some point, but it seems to work fine on 21 volts. But uh, I think that makes a big difference, just a bit more oomph. I think longer term I'll probably replace these lever switches with the Pico ones. I believe they work okay with CDUs. Uh, it'd be quite an expensive job though. You know, 19 Pico passing contact switches isn't going to be cheap. Um, but I don't want to go down the route of using these little toggle switches. I'd rather use levers. But you know, these do work with the Gauge Master CDU. You just have to move the lever slowly, which is fine. So what's next? Uh, well, I've started shaping this up, so it's uh, almost ready for plastering. Once I get the polystyrene uh, in here and this retaining wall fixed in place, I will be ready to do just that. Get this plastered up and then we can start thinking about uh, ballasting uh, this section of track from about that join in the removable section right round to about that join in that polystyrene there. I want to do you know, kind of do it in stages, but that's going to let me get the station modelled, uh, it'll let me get the area around the engine shed modelled, and uh, once that's done, we can move on to this area here. And then we'll move on to this area, which will be fairly straightforward, I think, uh, the bit with the viaduct, a bit more complex. And then the bit over here is going to be a bit of work because I've got to build up a hill with a tunnel, and then we'll come back round and finish up over there. Actually, still got a bit of track to glue down here. So just a wee drop of PVA and dab it underneath. I'll top do that. Lay it down. Let that dry and that will be fixed in place. One other thing I'm going to have to do before I start ballasting is to paint all the sleepers. I like to uh, paint them a sort of dirty grey brown colour. Um, I'll just do that using acrylic paint. But uh, once I get all the, the track glued down, I've still got a few bits to glue down. Just can see there, but it's held in with screws. Get that glued down, then I can remove the screws. Um, yeah, once that's done, uh, and I get this bit uh, plastered here, and uh, my retaining wall sorted, then we can start ballasting uh, through the station and these sidings here, and uh, around this corner down to there. And we can start to get all this fenced and textured and get some people back and stuff and get the, uh, the station operational. So that's uh, the kind of short-term plan of where I'm going. Um, it's going to take a bit of time, it's an awful lot of work. But uh, for the rest of it, yeah, it's going to take a long time to get it all sorted. But getting there slowly. Okay, so that's you pretty much up to date with where I am in the layout. Um, next couple of videos are probably going to be repair requests. Uh, but after that, um, I'm probably going to have to cut down on the number of uh, repair videos I do. Um, I've got the layout to do, I've got a huge amount of work to do in it and I want to progress it as much as I can over the next month or two. Um, so, uh, as I say, the next video will be a repair. Maybe the one after that will be a repair as well. After that, it's almost certainly going to be a video either on my mainline coaches uh, or work on the layout, one of the two. Okay, folks, catch you later.